Hey everybody, it's Pete. Welcome to today's episode of The Daily Ticker from Stock Trading Pro. We got an amazing guest today. For those of you that don't know, uh, I actually had a trading firm in New York City, prop trading firm. Uh, our guest today, Michael Milani. Uh, at that time, when I was in New York City, we all ran into similar circles and Michael was actually running and building one of the largest, if not the largest prop trading firm in New York City at that time. So all of us were kind of in a nice circle together. In today's video, in today's interview with Michael, we're going to start to get a little bit into the weeds of what actually happens behind the scenes at prop trading firms and more specifically, what it means to um, partner yourself or trade through a broker dealer who is really thinking about you as the trader, as somebody more than just commissions. There's so much more that goes on behind the scenes. And I think a lot of people like to hear about the, the zero dollar broker dealers and how they're thinking they're getting the greatest deal in the world and really have no idea what happens when they hit that button and hitting like the, the automatic button or the best fill, whatever, whatever they're called on your particular platform. Today is going to be really interesting. We're going to go behind the scenes with Michael Milani of Mondium Capital. I just want to show his website really quick just so everybody has a chance to see. This is where you're going to go. We'll actually post this link uh, below the video in the description so everybody can take a hike on over there, either during the video or after the video. And, and Mike, if you have anything else that maybe you want to put in the description, we'll add to that um, as well. Uh, so Michael Milani, my pal, thank you so much for joining me here today. Thanks, man. Pete, it's a pleasure being here as usual. I always love hanging out with you. Did I miss anything about uh, the New York City vibe that we had? I mean, it, it was a pretty tight crowd of people. And, and even some people at downtown, midtown, on the east, that was, everybody knew each other. It's a small universe, man. Like I said, back then, whoever was in the, the prop trading business or the trading business in general was a small universe. The electronic trading was uh, new and sort of exciting for everybody. So we have a, a nice, tight little, little click. And you know, you keep a good reputation so that 15, 20 years from now, you can uh, be hanging out with all the same people and have good things to say. And That's funny you say that. I actually had somebody who just came into our community the other day saying, I can't find anything bad about you. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> yeah, it's 23 years later and you can't. That's the people that you want to be doing business with. Uh, Pete, like I said, I know you have 15 years <laughs> or so, and I, I we, we still talk all the time, and yeah. uh, I learn a lot from you, so it, it's good to be here. So let, let's keep it – let's start high level and start to work our way down, and I'll just keep it like um, – what does the average retail trader, and not, not necessarily naming any other broker dealers, right? that's not the point. It's what does the average retail trader not really, what are they not even aware of that they could sure. possibly be um, asking for concessions on or adding into how they trade or anything? Like that? What, what is the average retail trader not even aware of? Well, again, I, I, I always tell people that um, I've used this a lot recently talking about the, the Pacino movie, uh, Any Given Sunday, where he talks about you know, fighting for that extra inch and, and you know, um, everything is a game of inches, right? So in the, in the trading world, the way we look at a trader is based on tenths of pennies, mills, which are hundreds of pennies. So that's kind of how we kind of grade our traders. Well, how much, what kind of commission are you making? What kind of profits are you making? All these different things. So um, when you're talking to a retail trader and they say, you say to them, well, where are you routing your orders? Or, you know, what are you paying in commissions? Or are you sure your fees are correct? And they say, well, I don't know where I'm routing all these things. <laughs> I tell everybody that the devil's in the details and all these things. So some of the advice that I give to retail traders is reconciliation. Make sure every month, every day, every week, whenever, you go through your trading statements and you make sure that your SEC fees are correct. You make sure your TAF and NSEC fees are correct. You make sure if your broker is telling you that they're zero commission, that they're actually zero commission, um, or your ECN fees are correct. I mean, all these little tenths of pennies and mills will tend to add up over the course of your day, your month, and your lifetime. So you really want to be cognizant of that. Very similar to, you know, I'm the guy who we go to the restaurant. We, You and I were having lunch in Long Island a, a couple of months ago, um, where if I order two coffees, an appetizer, and an entree, I want to look at the bill and make sure it's all on there because I'm not saying broker dealers do this on purpose, but there's a lot of mistakes when you're dealing with millions of shares, billions of shares a month, or, or how many transactions there are. And it's very easy to let those devils in the details kind of fall by the wayside. So you want to be really cognizant to make sure that, A, you know what your fees are, B, you're being charged the fees correctly, and you're cognizant of, from a cost basis, where you're routing your orders, where they're going, where you're getting filled, and if you're being charged correctly. And I think that's a really important thing for new traders to understand. So from a broker dealer perspective, and again, I want to make sure everybody's aware that everything we're talking about is for educational purposes. This is just a conversation between two friends that we're recording and giving everybody some detail on stuff you might never even be exposed to. In what ways can a broker dealer uh, create value or add value 
to the people trading with them? Sure. So um, again, th there's a lot of different things you can look at, right? The routing is always a big one. So where they're routing your orders and you've got lit markets, which are typically faster executions that are most expensive. You've got dark venues, which are sort of in the middle. Then you've got market makers um, that, you know, sometimes will give you zero ex execution or they're actually paying your broker for the order flow. So you want to make sure that from a routing perspective that your broker dealer, if you're using an active trading broker, right? So I don't consider uh, Mondium to be a competitor of, not to mention any names, these zero commission broker dealers, because they're really for true, true retail traders trading 20 shares of this and 50 shares of that or holding things for longer periods of time. Mondium is really geared more towards experienced, active, almost professional style traders that need extensive routing services, uh, extensive stock loan services, and things like that. So when you break down with a, um, with a professional trader, what fees they're paying and, and what services they need access to, your commissions are obviously very important. Your, your routing and execution is very, very important. Your stock loan and stock locate is very, very important as well. Can you short the stocks you need to short when you need to short them? Everybody can short, well, I'm not saying everybody, but there are brokers out there that have extensive stock loan lists for things like Apple and Tesla. And then if there is a stock du jour that pops up out of nowhere that a guy misses a number or a stock is, is in play that day or whatever, it's very hard for them to find um, shares to locate or shares to borrow. So you've got to go out there and, and, and search for those things. So your broker should be doing a lot of that for you to make sure, again, you have the routing you need, you have the executions you need, you have fees that are reasonable, where if you're a very active trader, um, the fees aren't going to kill you and put you underwater. Um, and from a stock loan and stock locate standpoint, that um, you have the inventory you need to trade the way you need to trade and take advantage of opportunities. So just, just to make sure everybody understands the language, when you say stock loan, that means stocks being available to short? Okay, so... Stock Just want to make loan sure is, the language correct. Sorry about that. Stock loan and stock locate are two different things. So stock locates are you are trading intraday and XYZ stock pops up on your radar and you look at that and say this could be a good opportunity to short. So you go to your front end platform, you will borrow 1000 shares of XYZ, you'll have a cost for it. You accept it and then you hit the bid and get short that stock. You need a locate based on Reg SHO, which is a a, a regulatory term, but um, you need a locate in order to short that stock. So stock locates are, uh, the pricing is based on the supply and demand of either your broker, your clearing firm, or your stock locate or stock loan provider. Uh, and they will give you pricing on those shares, right? Obviously, as a trader, you want those, those you want the maximum inventory for the cheapest price, right? And, and that'll all depend broker to broker. So you want to price those things out. I always tell people, at least with my firm, Send me a list of the, sh of the stocks that you trade on a day-to-day -day basis or your broker doesn't have a certain symbol one day. Reach out to us and say, hey, Mike, do you guys have these things? And we'll send you an inventory that day. Again, it changes from time to time, but you know, you'll, you'll understand uh, what we have on a day-to-day -day basis and compare it to your broker. We might be better, we might not. Um, stock loan is overnight. So that same XYZ stock, let's say 4 o'clock comes and the market closes and you really like this for the next two or three days. So you borrowed those shares um, on Monday and you wanna hold the stock till Wednesday. The fees you will pay to hold the stock overnight, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday is a stock loan fee, which is a separate charge that again, can be ambiguous if, if you don't know the right questions <laughs> to ask. So you, should, you gotta reach out to your broker and say, what am I being charged in stock loan fees for this stock on this day? Remember, anything with value has a cost to it, um, at least from my perspective. So you want to make sure that you know what those costs are. You know that there's inventory and sometimes you'll get bought in, which means that your broker will call you and say, you know what? You can't hold this thing tomorrow because we don't have the shares on stock loan to an in inventory. So you have to cover your position, which is very frustrating because as you, we both know that's when the stock is going to plummet the next day. Yeah, I actually you, had that they, problem uh, two weeks ago with coin coin had that giant gap down went down for a few days and we couldn't get it short. Right. So um, that's, that's how your broker to answer your question, uh, bluntly can be value added to you as a trader by making sure you have the right tools, the right inventory at the right price. And most importantly, you know what those prices are going in and it's very transparent. So you can figure out how to, you know, work on your, on your plan. So actually two things there. First one is actually, um, 
letting people understand what it means to be short selling because a lot of people who might be listening to this aren't really understanding like how do you make money when it goes down i think everybody everybody understands that by buying options put that you're betting on the stock going down but how do you actually do that with stocks so just to give everybody a little bit of a lesson on that what you're actually doing is what mike is describing here is you're actually borrowing the stock from your broker dealer to short sell the stock so you're essentially borrowing it to sell it and then when you get out of it, you buy it back and it goes back into that inventory. Sometimes your broker dealer does not have it available for you to short sell or to borrow. And that's when you get in um, the software that I'm using, it says HTB or ET, easy to borrow or hard to borrow. So if a stock is collapsing, banking crisis recently, might not have been able to get the stock short to be able to take advantage of it on the short side. Or worse, not available, right? When there's a big red box on your screen and you're, you're itching to short this thing exactly. and you can't because your broker dealer doesn't have the inventory. And I'm not even saying every broker dealer has the same problem. Some broker dealers, remember, if, if you're a successful broker dealer in this climate, and again, from the big houses to the more boutique firms like us, they all have a niche where we're all good at certain things. We may not be as good as other things. Um, but one of the things, like I said, you really want to ask is, what does your stock loan, stock locate, inventory, and pricing look like? And ask. Reach out to them. Ask them. Shoot an email because uh, all of our emails are recorded. So we have to be honest and forthcoming um, on our emails, as we most people are. But um, reach out. What is it going to cost me to short this? What's going to cost me to short it overnight? Let them come back to you with an answer. Realize that that may change based on inventory, day-to-day um, -day supply and demand. But you want to have a clear understanding as to what those costs are going to be like anything else. So let's get a little clarification because I know I know that this was something on my mind. Like I think most active traders who we're speaking to right now, you have your day traders, you have your swing traders, maybe somebody who trades between earnings reports and that kind of thing. It's not easy to get somebody to, well, there's two things. Number one is most traders prefer to have their types of trading separated. So this is my day trading account where I have all that margin. This is my overnight. So I might want to be long that stock today, but maybe I don't want, you know, maybe I want to short it for the next week or vice versa, keep them separate. It's not easy to mentally sometimes use a different brokerage if you're if you're comfortable with that. Um, what would make somebody, like you just said, somebody is, there's the big firms, there's the boutique firms and everybody's good at something. Why would an active trader come to you, Mondium, and say, What's, why would I? Why would I think about opening an account there? What, why, what, why, what why, you, Mondium, right? why, why Mondium? Why Mondium? Why us? But more specifically, from an active trader perspective, I'm used to X, Y, Z, and I love them. All my money's in one account. Why should I think about coming to you as well? Sure. Well, the first thing I'll tell you is, is that, and we know this from experience, Pete. A lot of the biggest traders that I know that are really successful, they all have multiple accounts for a million different reasons, right? Um, interest rates are one thing. Certain firms charge different interest rates based on overnight, certain firms charge less, certain firms charge more. Uh, if you have idle cash in your account, certain firms will pay you interest on the money that you have. Um, what I tell people is we, meaning Mondium, really caters to very active, um, largely intraday, but I think there's a, 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 a place for one to three day holds, which I think is a real sweet spot for a lot of the traders, at least that I know. Um, um, so. The one thing that I think people come to us for, whether they look at our website or meet us and say, why Mondium, is our commission costs to start with, right? So we are not a zero commission broker because we do give our traders the ability to route their orders, whether it's the lit markets, dark pools, market makers, and, and I'll go into the PFOF thing in a second, um, or smart order routers, or Pete Renzulli comes to me and says, hey, Mike, I'd like to trade with you guys, but I need you to help me build a router because I want to ping ARCA and NASDAQ first and or ping a dark pool first and exhaust ARCA and NASDAQ, we, with the technology that we partner with, third-party technology, um, we can build those things for you. But people come to us, the traders that we have that said, they we're opening an account with you guys because it's the commissions. So um, we charge a flat five mil rate um, across the board. To give you an idea, five mils, and I get confused when I see all the decimal points and zeros myself a lot of time, is 50 cents per thousand. So a lot of the competitors that we deem to be competitors are charging two dollars a thousand, three dollars a thousand. Um, I always hated negotiating deals with professional traders who they want everything for free, and I want to charge as much as I can as a for-profit business, right? So um, I built all of this based on a simplistic format. We want to keep it simple. We want to charge a flat rate across the board. You trade a million shares a day. You're trading ten shares a day. It's five mils. It makes things very easy for everybody from a negotiation standpoint. Um, but what we really built this on is 
a service. So active traders are, they're high maintenance in general, not to stereotype a whole group of people, but- um, <laughs> Well, they are. When I had my prop firm, is you needed the active traders to negotiate a deal to get a better rate on your commissions. Uh, absolutely. But they, are, they, are the, they were the craziest people ever. I remember one time in 2006, we had a guy running into the office because he didn't get the fill he wanted 20 minutes after the market closed. He wanted us to call the floor of the New York Stock Exchange for a governor's ruling, I think it was called. They're crazy. Right. You need them to grow, to grow the business, but they can be the toughest people to... Uh, they're, they're difficult. They're, they're high maintenance. And in my opinion, they should be high maintenance because it's a latency game that, um, you know, again, all software platforms are, 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 or, or the routing are all judged by their latency. How fast are you to the market? How fast is the system? But how fast your broker gets back to you when you don't have the shares you want or your orders get stuck yeah. or... I think um, stuck there's a system is probably out. one of the biggest things, stuck orders. You, you, you're not even sure if you filled. So one of the ways I feel like I built my career is I answer the phone and my guys answer the phone, whether things are good or bad, right? You don't need me answering the phone when you made X number of dollars today and things are great. You need us to answer the phone and you need us to fix your problems when things aren't so good. Or again, there's a system issue or stuck orders or... I'm trying to hit the bid on XYZ stock and you don't have inventory. Can you call your clearing firm or, or negotiate this to get this for us? So because of the fact that active traders are such a niche, important part of any trading business, um, I felt like there was a, there was a, a, a you know, like Richard Branson says, you know, don't build a business, solve a problem kind of thing. And I felt like too many traders that I've dealt with over the course of my career have felt like they're just an account number or they're just a login they want somebody to answer the phone. They want somebody to be on top of it. So I talk to all the Mondium traders myself. And, and you know this from, I mean, I'm a very hands-on kind of a person. Um, I hope I get to the point where I can't, where things are so big that as you do, somebody calls me Mr. Milani because my assistant's <laughs> handling everything. Um, but ultimately, um, I, I think that's really where active traders in general, that's the problem that we're trying to solve. How can we be transparent with our pricing? How can we give active traders, the value add that they need. And more importantly, when things are not so great or the market's difficult or whatever, who's going to be there to answer the phone? Who's going to be there to answer my emails in a, in a relatively fast fashion? Um, and how do I work at a firm where I am not just an account number and somebody's actually trying to solve my problems? And I think that's where we'll fit in. Well, it sounds like me, that, cust that level of customer service is a part of the mission and the values that you have in the company. So whether it's you answering the phone or people that you've hired to make sure it's still getting done, that's that's admirable because I can tell you right now, customer service with pretty much everything online right now is first they send you to a knowledge base and then they give you automated text bots. And then maybe you can wait 25 minutes to an hour to get somebody on the phone through chat. Right. So that level of customer service is uh, not common these days. I well, again, that, that's when we hire somebody. And again, I don't have a huge team um, for, for now anyway, but all my team, um, I feel like are experienced. They care. Um, they've been around. And when I interview them, and I, I text them the next day or I give them a call or I reach out to them on a personal level, um, I want answers back quickly. And I know that's something that you and I have in common yeah. where I, I call you, I email you, just text me back. Hey, listen, I don't have your answer right now, but give me a day and I'll have it for you yesterday. What's the title for our interview? Um, I'll get back to you today and, and we can discuss this and have it. So I think uh, you know, 80% of life is just showing up and being where you're supposed to be. And uh, we kind of built the whole Mondium credo based on that. So is that, is that the the fees that you mentioned before? Is that plus or minus CCN fees on top of that? So they can take it's an plus extra or minus rebate it's, and whatnot. It's plus or minus CCN fees. So obviously you're you're getting paid rebates if you're adding liquidity. You are getting charged if you're taking liquidity. And again, the one thing that I've heard from a lot of traders is this whole PFOF payment for order flow concept. Is my broker selling my order? Well, if you're a zero commission broker, you have to be to be profitable, right? They they have to be selling your orders. Again, I got to be careful with saying that. Um, let's, get, let's get into PFOF and what that means, because you, you use the acronym. Let's just make sure everybody understands completely sure. what that means. P PFOF is the acronym for payment for order flow, right? So basically what that is, is that market makers out there, um, Citadel, Susquehanna, Virtu, Two Sigma are, are a couple of big ones. I read an article the other day that said that uh, Citadel handles one out of every four U.S. equity trades. Wow. Which is significant. So how big is your market maker in that? If that is, is accurate, which I believe it is, very significant. So what they're doing is you're lifting the offer. So you you have a stock and the spread is 17 by 19. Pete Renzulli goes in and decides to, to pay the offer. So he pays 19. 
um, it's possible that that you're taking liquidity from your market maker. So one of the ways that these market makers uh, make that profitable for them with algorithms and things like that is they will um, offer to pay certain brokers for that retail order flow. Remember, they don't want professional order flow because a lot of market impact um, and large orders on the on the offer, let's say, would move the stock four, five, six cents. They don't want yeah. that. They want especially stock that doesn't have liquidity. Right. So they don't want to be on the other side of those trades. So um, they will pay you a certain percentage or X number of mills or whatever it is to sell them your order flow. So I looked at this and said, everybody knows this is, exists, right? Ten years ago, this was sort of a, a quiet, nobody realized this was going on type of thing. At least I didn't. Uh, and as I got more and more into it, I said to myself, if you as a trader choose to um, engage that practice, you should be engaging it yourself. You should make that decision to sell your order flow to the marketplace versus your broker saying, we're not going to give you the ability to route to the various venues and we're just going to sell your order flow for you. So we have a route, uh, it's called MNDC, which is our MPID, our market participant identifier, uh, PFOF. So you as a trader can go choose to sell your orders to the market uh, or to the market maker. Uh, and we actually going to pay you three mills, and, which is part of what we get from the market makers to sell that order flow yourself. If you decide not to and you want to go to ARCA and NASDAQ and lit venues, you can do that. Uh, if you want to use one of our smart order routers or dark aggregators, you can do that as well. But if you're in, let's say, a very liquid name, for an example, Spiders, Diamonds, um, Microsoft, something that has a lot of liquidity and high volume, you might want to say, listen, I don't care if my order gets there a little bit slower or if a market maker is on the other side of it. I want to get uh, capture a little bit of that rebate myself, and we give you the ability to do that. I just to touch on the rebate side of things. So just for everybody who might not be aware of what you probably actually do have available in, in your broker dealer, the add or remove liquidity for electronic communication networks well, on that part of it. You guys do that, right? That's part of, of what you do. So if you're advertising to buy or sell, it doesn't matter. It's, it's either side of the market. But if you go to the bid and place an order and it goes out to the market and you're sitting on the bid and somebody sells you that stock or if you do it on the other side. So let's say you are uh, you bought a stock and it's going up and now you're advertising to sell. And as it goes up, the order that is sitting in the market gets taken. You are actually getting paid to place that liquidity. So there's a whole other business behind that, which you and I were very aware of in the early 2000s where there was an entire business built and just to really blow everybody's mind on this topic where you were actually capturing the rebate every time you placed a order to advertise on the bid or the offer but you paid to re to take it the same way you were getting paid to receive it but rebate trading back then to just to really drive everybody crazy right now you could actually lose a thousand dollars trading during the day but make three thousand dollars in rebates and still have a two thousand dollar net for the day that's how that business unfolded, which probably lasted about five years at that time, maybe, maybe even a little bit longer. But that was a whole other universe back back in the day. But that type of trading, that type of order execution is available through a broker dealer like Mike's to Correct. receive that, to get paid to place those orders. Yep. Uh, to get a rebate, to get a rebate. To get a rebate. Order. Right. So if you're right. posting I, liquidity I, I, again, Correct. Yeah. <laughs> again, same thing. If, if, if the quote is 17 by 19, Pete Renzulli's a trader, Pete wants to take liquidity, which means he wants to pay 19 to get into the trade, then he's going to be charged an additional fee to take liquidity, whether it's lit, dark, market maker, whatnot, if he's using a non PFOF route, at least at Mondium. Um, if you want to add liquidity to the marketplace, which means you want to place your bid at, let's say, 18, where you become the bid or 17 or below, um, you're adding liquidity to the market and those venues will pay you a rebate to do so. So to bring all this kind of home to really like organize this for everybody, we're talking about the savings or even hidden cost that again, hidden is not illicit. It's just all buried within the executions of making or saving money by being conscious and deliberate in how you're routing your orders. Is that correct? Is that a thousand percent? And, and again, <laughs> ab absolutely. Um, and remember, um, my, my advice to traders, new traders, existing traders, again, the, the old hat type of traders already know this, but for new traders coming into it, tens of pennies matter. Hundreds of pennies matter. I built a whole career on, on those two concepts. Um, don't, if you lifted the offer, you did a market order and you thought you were gonna get filled at 46 cents, but you got filled at 60 cents, you'd lose your mind. 
because yeah. you got spilled 16 cents away from where you thought you were. Um, don't focus on that, but not focus on you took liquidity at 30 mils, but you didn't add liquidity where you're getting a 20 mil rebate, let's say, or five mil or whatever the rebate is. Yeah. Um, be cognizant of all of those things. Take a look at your sheets. Realize, like Pacino says, you got to fight for that inch. It's a game of inches. Yeah. Um, so you, you got to focus on that as well. And I think it's really important, yeah. especially for new traders to understand. I remember when I had my firm, it's, it's such a delicate topic to teach somebody. But what we're talking about is high level uh, running a trading business for yourself. Like uh, the way that we do things in our community, I teach people you're running a trading business and your expense, your trading loss is a business expense. Your software is an expense. Your executions are an expense. And while you're paying those expenses, which are a part of running the business, you have to, you're still, then you still also have to learn how to trade. You have to learn how to cut your, you cut your losses, learn how to make more money. But these other things that are 100, what we're talking about today are hundred percent in your control, choosing how you plan to execute just as simple as um, not lifting the offer when something has a two cent spread. Try and get filled on the bid first. Stop paying that extra money when the odds, the, most stocks are going like this anyway before they finally move. You might as well get paid the rebate by advertising or advertising on the bid of the offer before that happens. Absolutely. I, I couldn't the agree downside, more. The downside though is I remember when I, when I had my firm and we were teaching somebody and I'm like, what are you, why are you holding on to that trade? And he's like, I keep trying to advertise to get the rebate. I'm like, you just lost, all, you just lost, get out of the trade. So like, that's the advantage of understanding both, but then really thinking, okay, it's more important to get out than get the rebate at this particular moment. Couldn't agree more. Absolutely. So, uh, you mentioned briefly dark pools there. Is that something that most retail traders, because we get asked all the time, do we trade on dark pools? What do I think about dark pools? I kind of like to keep it higher level for newer people coming into the industry. What, what, what is, can you explain dark pools if you guys get involved, if you don't, why that kind of thing? Sure, we, we do. Um, so dark pools are basically pools of liquidity that are traditionally made by ATSs or other brokerage firms. Almost all the big brokers, um, for instance, uh, Credit Suisse's dark pool was called CrossFinder, right? So a lot of the big brokers out there have their own dark pools, just basically pools of liquidity that they're internalizing themselves. Why go out to the marketplace if they've got traders internally that want to buy 100 Apple and sell 100 Apple? Why give that business to NASDAQ or ARCA or whoever? Just take it internally. So what they did was they opened up those dark pools to other venues so that firms like mine or other firms out there can execute against those dark pools. Typically, they're anonymous. So you don't really know who's on the other sides of those trades inside of those dark pools. Um, Typically, dark pools are cheaper executions than lit venues, um, but not as cheap as a market maker. Again, that's typically across the board. So um, I always liken this to a seesaw. So if you're dealing with <laughs> lit venues, they tend to be the most expensive um, and the most li the most liquid venues Let's make sure everybody, in general. What, what does lit venue mean? Lit venue is ARCA, NASDAQ, EDGEX, EDGE, BATS, BYX, any of the, the major uh exchanges out there to execute orders okay so what about liquidity in a dark pool because i have a lot of people coming to me saying i love trading our dark pool but i have no idea if there's a bid or an offer out there how, how does that work with well again you can execute um if you ask your broker they'll possibly let you execute directly against a certain dark pool i want to send my order to goldman or merrill or whoever else it is out there um we use dark aggregators so we have a, a route called Mon Dark. Um, they're all Mon branded because we work with our execution guys to, to build these for us. But uh, it's called Mon Dark. So basically, what it'll do is it'll it'll shop that order to X number of different uh, dark venues, so that you can get a fill uh, at a cheaper price than a lit venue, but not as cheap of a price as a uh, as a market maker. So again, is a dark pool better than a lit market? It all depends on price and, and liquidity and everything else it all really and certain traders are specific to certain orders some guys like certain venues other than uh others my advice to you is is that test all the different venues look at all the different pricing make sure that and, and also a lot of times has to do with the stock that you're trading the more liquid the stock that you're trading the easier it is for you to find liquidity in lesser liquid places like market makers and dark pools the less liquid that stock or the lower the average daily volume in a lot of those stocks and the more market impact the stock has, it might be better if you go to um, uh, lit venues. But again, it's a trader by trader thing and it's a personal thing. My advice is test it all out, talk to your broker, make sure they understand what you're trying to accomplish and work with them to, to build routes that can help you. 
So it's interesting. You said several times now about working with the broker to build a route. I don't think anybody on the, listening to this call, at least not most of the people that we would speak to, would even be able to think they would have that conversation with their broker. Sure. I mean, again, every every broker is different. I don't want to say, you know, you can't have that conversation. Typically, the bigger brokers are more factories where you're talking to a customer service person who is in another country or whatever. Um, a lot of, and this is the place where I think the niche brokers, myself included, will kind of shine. So you can get actually a trade desk person on the phone and say, hey, listen, I don't like the way my orders are filling. Every time I try to lift the offer, I don't see the print go off on the offer. I see it going off on an ATS. Uh, and they can walk you through and explain what a lot of that is and hopefully build you something or work with you to help you get the fills you want at the most reasonable price, right? So it, it's, again, by going to, to lit venues, in my opinion, um, they're going to be the, the faster fills. They're going to be more liquidity. Um, but you're paying more for that, right? It's, it's a quality over quantity type of thing. Um, but if you're in a situation where, depending on the stock selection, you want to work with your broker to uh, help you maximize that that mm -hmm. value, um, they can probably do that. And I say that because we talk to traders every single day about that same thing. And they'll say to us, I didn't know I could call you. Right, exactly. Like that's, my my, that's really what I'm trying to get across to people is like most people wouldn't even think that they could even have that conversation. Yep. But like I said, um, I, I tell people all the time, every broker that you're working with, if they're in business, is probably very good. Uh, and I always tell people, well, why should I come to Mondium? I tell them, you shouldn't right away. Um, call us, ask us questions, find out about the routing that we're doing, find out about the stock loan and stock locates. Um, Talk to us, ask us questions. And again, start with a small account. I always tell people for right now, we're offering three months free of our platforms, um, Sterling and DAS, almost to, not to use an Italian phrase, but make an offer they can't refuse and say, <laughs> listen, try us for, for free from a platform standpoint for three months and get a feel for what we're about. If we're not for you, wonderful. We'll, we'll wire your funds back and we'll, we'll move on from there. Um, but like I said, I think pricing is why people start to look at us and while we're opening these accounts and the fact that we're on top of our, our game in terms of working with them to provide value is why people stay. Do both of those softwares have hotkeys? I know that's a big deal for active traders. I, I couldn't use the software without hotkeys. Yes, so absolutely. Point, point and click drives an uh, uh, active trader bananas. Yep. Um, again, it's point and click if you want it to be in terms of the market maker windows and stuff like that, but full hotkeys. And, and like I said, um, the guys on our trade desk, um, myself included, uh, can walk you through helping you set up your keys the way you want, the routes the way you want. Again, we try to make this as high touch of an experience as possible. That's actually been one of the problems that we've had in our community. One of the first things we do is we train people. For, like, obviously, there's the what to look at in the markets. But if your software is not set up properly to tell you what to look at, you, you might as well not even have the lessons in the first place. So actually, the very first thing that we do, our very first live session is setting up everybody's charts. Yep. And there's certain charts or softwares that I'm I, I'm not using or haven't used. And the nightmare stories that they have, they can't figure out how to set the software up. I feel bad for them. They, they have a lot of money in the account and they can't get anybody on the phone to tell them how to set the software up. It's, it's actually very frustrating. Uh, the software companies, like I said, um, themselves usually will provide tutorials and things online. But I'm, I'm a little older of a guy. So I like when somebody will walk me through this or log into my box themselves and set everything up for me and say, hey, look, it's it's done. So, um, but yeah, like I said, the brokers you're with and everyone else, ask those questions, find out if they can offer that service to you. And if not, shoot me an email and we're happy to, to see if we can help. So I'm actually going to pull the site up again, Mike, just so everybody can uh, see what we're talking about. So if anyone wants to get in touch with Mike, I'll actually post this below in the description. It's mondiumcapital.com. And um, you can actually see here, built for traders. So what we'll do, Mike, is any links that you might want to have uh, in the description, uh, we'll leave that, whether it's a phone number um, uh, email. If there's a support email, we'll put a link to the website. Uh, anything you think of that the average trader should know, should be interested in, or anything that we didn't cover today? Well, again, it's all about solving a problem, right? So what I will tell you is, is that the email and the phone number that you'll see there are my email and my phone number. So again, I hope I get to the point where we are so big that I, I can't do these things myself anymore. But for right now, um, Myself and my, my director of sales and marketing, Kate, are answering all of these emails ourselves. We're not jobbing it out or, or anything like that. Um, so reach out to us. I, I have this problem with my broker. I can't get somebody on the phone. My routing is terrible. I can't short what I want to short. Let me see if we can help you. If we can, we'll give you three months free uh, of our platforms to see for yourself. 
Um, and again, we built uh, one of the biggest undertakings we took last year uh, was building our own client onboarding portal, which I didn't. And we were talking about this before, Pete, before we got on about uh, development and programming and all these different things. I've always been a front office person. I never had to deal with a lot of these back office developments and portals and all these different things. It was uh, interesting of a, of a process for me. But yeah. we did this because we felt like the active trading community wanted that uh, app type um, next generation portal type of feel where you can wire funds back and forth directly from the portal and plaid will verify your account and you want to uh, suspend your account for a month or whatever and not be charged fees. You can do it right through the portal without human interaction. Um, you want to log into the portal and see all of your trades for the day. It's all in one, uh, nice little package in one place. So it took us a while to build. Um, it's, it's always in development. It's always a dynamic kind of a thing, but, um, but yeah, I mean, that would be my advice to anybody. Ask questions, challenge the, the guys that are that are working with you to, to do better for you. And if not, shoot me an email and I'll do my best. All right. Thank you so much, Mike. Appreciate it. Have a great day. My pleasure, Pete. Always good. Cheers. Take care.